Warning, Tsukihime is an adult visual novel with themes and depictions of sex, sexual violence, rape, gore, and abuse. Warnings will be placed before any of these pop up in the video, just be advised that these themes are in the story. Hello, and welcome back to Tsukihime. In the last part, Shiki's classmate Yumizuka went missing, and we eventually found her in an alley filled with death. She has become a vampire, but the how and the why is still unknown. She did not kill Shiki, but separated after the two talked. Our protagonist, dazed and confused, yet morbidly excited, managed to make his way back to the mansion. He was unable to sleep, until his sui brought him some sleeping medicine courtesy of Kohaku that knocked him out quickly. His uneasiness wormed its way into the dream world, and it is after this sleep that we now start today's part. Shiki-sama? There's a voice calling me. Please remain strong. I shall bring you something to drink. I sense the presence receding. Footsteps. It makes me realize that it is morning now. I open my eyes. There isn't anyone else in my room. I hear something ragged. What is that noise? Speaking, I realize that it is my own breathing. Huh? My body is drenched in sweat. A tiredness suffocates me as if I had just ran a long marathon. <laughs> my head hurts because I saw that hideous dream. Yumizuka painted with blood and I, staring at her in envy. A complete nightmare. There's something wrong. I managed to say this much, still breathing hard. Last night's dream still lingers in my head. It really was a horrific nightmare. I was just blanked out, in, blanked out in my dream, as if I couldn't rouse myself from the nightmare I just, if I tried. Shiki-sama! And then, Hisui rushes into the room. Hisui? Did something happen? You didn't even knock. Um, are you awake, Shiki-sama? Yeah, I just got up. Good morning, Hisui. Thanks for coming to wake me. Um, yes. Good morning. Returning my greeting ap apologetically, Hisui approaches the bed. I have brought you something to drink. You do not appear well, so please drink it. Looking at it, it seems like she brought a drink on the silver tray like she did yesterday. Huh? I don't really feel bad or anything. I slept soundly and I feel refreshed. But... Hisui stares at me. You seem to be in a very poor state earlier. Shiki-sama, does the scar on your chest hurt not hurt? No, not really. Well, it may be because of that terrible dream. I was really having quite a nightmare. I feel dizzy just remembering it. Sui looks intently at my face. I see. Sui, you woke me up. Yes, I am deeply sorry. What are you saying? Thanks, Sui. You really helped me a lot. I really do mean that from my heart. If she hadn't woken me up, I might still be trapped inside that awful nightmare. I'll change and go to the dining room. Thanks for everything, and for giving me this drink. Sorry about that. No, you do not need to apologize. I will wait for you in the sitting room. Isui silently leaves the room. To be honest, I really am quite moved. I thought she was truly without emotions, but she may just be poor at expressing them. She was so distressed over me having a nightmare, it makes me smile imagining her in such a hurry. Maybe it isn't that hard to see Isui smile. Well, time to get up. I throw off the sheets and get up. In that instant, pain explodes through my body. Gah! It's from a much deeper place, aching with my heartbeat. Uh, uh. Clenching the sheets, I somehow weather the pain. Ah! It fades away. There's nothing lingering. Perhaps just a sudden fit? Chest wound. I bring my hand over my chest. There's a great scar there, and even though it is healed, at times it still hurts like it did just now. The doctor said the physical wound is healed, but that the mind must be replaying the pain over and over again. Usually the scar begins throbbing after I see a traffic accident or a dead body. The image of blood or death must make me recall the accident eight years ago. Because of last night, I guess. The red back alley, and the normal, smiling face of Yumizuka. Gah! My chest hurts. The image of Yumizuka doesn't leave my mind, but I don't know what I should do, what I can do. I can only live my everyday life. Shit. Swearing at myself, I roll out of bed. After changing out of my pajamas and into my school uniform, I head to the sitting room. Arriving in the sitting room, Shiki is met with Akiha and Asui, with Akiha greeting him. She asks to speak with him, and Shiki agrees, though he isn't in the mood to talk. 
Akiha demands to know what he was doing last night, and Shiki answers that he just went for a walk and apologizes for coming home late. Though he plays it off as nothing big, she stresses that it is, especially with the killings in town. Shiki realizes that what Yumizuka was doing last night fits the mold of a vampire serial killer perfectly. Akiha continues, saying that he shouldn't strain himself and to ask for her help if he's in trouble, but Shiki's not listening. The near certainty of Yumizuka being the killer has taken over his mind. His thoughts are interrupted by Akiha, who is fiercely glaring at him. She asks if this is something that he can't speak about, and Shiki confirms, saying it doesn't involve her. You're going to keep going your own way, is that what you're saying, Nissan? I understand. Well, please feel free. If that's what you want, Nissan, I'll do the same. Akiha stands and walks out the lobby. Shiki-sama? Is this acceptable? Acceptable? Is what acceptable? I believe Akiha-sama is deeply concerned about you, Shiki-sama. But I think it is difficult for her since she does not often talk about her feelings. I know, but right now my head's full and I can't. I do feel sorry. Isui falls silent. Shiki-san, breakfast! Kwaku-san's voice can be heard from the dining room. I stand up and head towards it. I'm going. I'm getting that cereal with an egg with a whole thing of steak in it. At the gate, Isui asks when he'll be back, and Shiki responds that he'll likely be back in the evening. He's planning to look for Yumizuka, but only tells Isui that he's looking for something. Parting with Isui, Shiki makes it to school, but he feels like this part of the day was pointless. No one is concerned, Yumizuka isn't here, and the time just passes him by. Noon arrives, and as it's a Saturday, school finishes. Shiki doesn't know where to look, so he runs around the town until the sun starts to set. I bite my lip angrily, but it's not anger over not finding her. Two days ago, I'm mad at myself for promising such a thing in the first place. Help me when I'm in a pinch, okay? Yumizuka said that, and I answered lightheartedly. I would help as much as I could. Such an irresponsible answer. There's really nothing I can do. She said it hurt. I can't even find you, Mizuka, painfully suffering in the cold darkness. The sun is setting. I don't want to admit it, but maybe I can only find you, Mizuka, after nightfall. I told Asui I'd be back in the evening. Perhaps it's too early. I'll go back to the mansion and calmly think this through. At the mansion, Shiki is greeted by Hisui. He asks where Akiha is, and Hisui responds that she is not home yet. She actually will be a bit late, so he'll be having dinner before her. Shiki heads to his room, and after dinner, it is 9pm. He doesn't want to break the house curfew, but he can't get Yumizuka out of his head. He knows that she must be the serial killer, but his promise to her and her last words continue to haunt him. This mental battle continues until midnight, and Shiki is still wide awake. Shiki-sama, are you awake? Hisui's voice. Why is she up this late at night? I'm up, but why, Hisui? Yes, I was unsure, but if you were awake, I thought I, I should tell you. Tell me what? Just a while ago, a call came for you, Shikisama. The message was that I'll be waiting in the park. Phone call? This late at night? Yes, the call ended before I could ask for, the, for a name, so I was unsure if I should tell you, Shikisama. No, that is... This doesn't require any thought. That phone call had to have been from Yumizuka. Thanks, but it's a little late, so I'll wait until tomorrow. She's one of my classmates, so I'll see her tomorrow. That is not true. There is something wrong with smiling like that with such a strained face. Stupid, I'm not lying at all. I'm fine, I won't go out this late at night. Akiha would get mad and you would get in trouble, so there's no reason for me to do that. Hisui descends into silence. The conversation between us dies. Shikisama, please do not push yourself too hard. Nah, I'm not pushing myself, pushing anything. I'll go to sleep, so please go back to your room. Hisui just looks at me. Well, good night. Not being able to endure her stare, I slam the door. That's not nice. Sheesh, I can't hide anything from Hisui. I take my knife out of the drawer. I don't intend to necessarily use it, but I just feel better with it by my side. The park. Why would she call me out at this hour? Muttering, I think back to those foolish tales. Vampires can only move around about during nighttime. So supposing that's true, then Yumizuka didn't call me out at this hour. It's more like if it wasn't this hour, then she, wouldn't, she couldn't call me at all. Sorry, Hisui. Even I think I'm stupid. You told me not to strain myself, but I just can't sleep like this. 
Apologizing to the empty room, I quietly leave the mansion. Shiki follows a path devoid of people towards the park. A chill coats his body, and his throat starts to dry up. With these two feelings, he grabs his knife from his pocket. He's unsure why he wants to hold it, but he does so nonetheless. A feeling of danger has enveloped the park, but Shiki proceeds while trying to shake it off. There's no one around. A terribly dark and lonely place to meet someone. There's... Someone is crouched. Breathing raggedly, her face pale white as she scratches her throat in pain. Without a doubt, it is Yumizuka Satsuki. Yumi... Zuka? Her figure is tormented. Without a thought for what happened last night, I run towards her. Wait! Yumizuka stops me with just a word. Wait, Shiki-san, I'm glad you came, but I don't want you anywhere near, near right now. Please, don't come any closer. Her breathing looks painful. Her body convulses as she speaks as if she's about to collapse any second now. Don't be stupid. I'm not going to leave someone looking as painful as you alone. No, I'm okay. You came, so I'm fine now. Forcing herself up, Yumizuka smiles at me. What's going on, Yumizuka? Why haven't you been home? What was that about yesterday? Why that... Hmm? That what? That... You know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, her eyes aren't red. Oh my god. Oh fuck. If you mean yesterday, well, you saw what happened. I told you, I killed those people, didn't I? She answers frankly. It's almost as if she's laughing at my feelings of denial. Then, the recent killings in town were all you're doing, Yumizuka. I don't like to say it, but that's the way it is, yeah. What the hell do you mean, that's the way it is? It's just the way it is. I kill those people, and I'll keep on doing the same thing. I can't just lie about it, can I? Yumi, Zuka, you... Please, stop calling me that. I'm calling you Shiki-kun, so it's only fair for you to call me by my first name, too. What? I take a deep breath. Yumizuka is still like before. Even though she acts like she used to, she says some pretty scary things. When I think about it, I look foolish. I could never talk to you like this for all the years I watched you from afar. Uh, Yumizuka? I was always watching you, Shiki-kun. Even before I was saved in that warehouse, I was always watching you. I'm really a coward. I'm always, I always just agreed with the people around me and smiled when it seemed right. Before I knew it, everyone was treating me like an idol. So school wasn't fun for me. But that changed after you talked to me in the second year of junior high, Shiki-kun. Huh? Nah, it's not something you'd remember. How can I put it? You were always natural, never showing off. Probably you didn't even think about what you said back then. What can I say? Just as Yumizuka says, I remember nothing. I don't know what I said to her, or even if I had talked to her back then. It's okay. Don't make a face like that. You're only hanging out with Inui-kun, so it was normal for you to ignore other classmates. But that was okay. I was happy just being in the same class as you, Shiki-kun. It was my goal to talk to you and let you call me Yumizuka-san. Now that I think about it, it was too small of a wish. She really, she recalls nostalgically. Those ancient days. Like, she is remembering something that happened a long time ago. I was always watching you. I knew you'd never notice me, but I watched you anyway. Well, to be honest, I'm happy, but... Do you like me, Shiki-kun? How can I answer her right now? I like her, I hate her, I can't say. Why are you doing this to me? Can't answer is a non-answer. Saying I like her is not true? Like, it's kinda true. But it's probably not what I'm going for. But just saying I hate her is also kind of messed up, but, like, it makes sense considering she's a murderer. But, like, um, I kind of want to see where saying I like her goes, so I'm going to select that one. But I just like to note that she's definitely not killed everybody. Aside from whatever the past, uh, the last route was and her not doing that, it wouldn't make sense if she couldn't go out at night or go out in the morning because she was at class prior but I could also be wrong. But for now, let's just answer I like her. To be honest, I don't know. But I can't just leave you alone. Yes, since I talked to you, Mizuka, two days ago, she has never left my mind. So that must mean... Unlike your case, I don't feel like I've known you for years, but... Even though I knew it was dangerous, I still came here. 
I think I do like you. This face. <laughs> this face. Also, her eyes are red again. I'm scared. Yumizuka looks at me, aghast. I stare back at her. No. She shakes her head. She seems about to burst into tears. I don't want that. Yumizuka, son? Because that... That just makes me look stupid. Still aghast, Yumizuka looks down as she murmurs. Ah! Yumizuka's body trembles. Breathing painfully, she falls to her knees. Yumizuka starts violently coughing up blood, and Shiki rushes to her side. Putting a hand on her shoulder, her icy body temperature emanates past her clothes. Shiki scolds her for being out while being so cold, but she can only respond by calling his name before collapsing on top of him. Her mouth gets close to his neck as she falls, and he can feel the heat of her breath. Yumi Zuka? It's okay if you don't like me, Shiki-kun, because I really didn't understand you at all until now either. Yumi Zuka speaks as she coughs. It's all right, don't talk. I'll take you to the hospital. But I understand now who, are, who you are and what you want to do. I really understand now because... Huh? Yumi Zuka's arms tense. Or Yumi Zuka's arm tenses. With amazing strength, she digs into my shoulder. Because I, I became like you, Shiki-kun. Saying that, Yumizuka sinks her teeth into my neck. Ah! Fading. My consciousness is fading. Yumizuka's fangs dig into my neck. I'm being drained. As if all the life in my body is liquefied and sucks out, sucked out. Without strength, there are no thoughts. So my consciousness is not fading. It is simply being destroyed. Ah! There are no thoughts. I know I'll die if I stay like this, but I can't even... Kill this woman. All the same, for somewhere beyond my mind, my blood begins to boil. Yumizuka! Both my arms pushing her back out of pure reflex. She falls right on her behind. Oh, I, that's not what I meant to quote. What are... I stand up, but I can't. I'm so exhausted, I can barely lift an arm. Yumizuka sits, as if in a drunken stupor. Ah! Uh, I can't see her face clearly. Everything dims as my consciousness fades. I can't control my body either. All that exists is the pain in my neck. Blood gurgles forth. Yumizuka's teeth marks remain in my neck. And through these deep, those deep two holes, something black is being poured into my body. Ah! Uh, uh, a pain. A pain as if my spine is about to be ripped out. Ah! Uh, a pain. I claw at the ground. But there is no relief. I cannot move since Yumizuka has drained everything out of me, and the pain pours into me like a black snake. I can't move, so the black thing crawls and twists as it pleases inside me. Ah! Ah! I clutch at the ground. With glazed eyes, Yumizuka looks at me. Yumi... Zuka... What have you... It's okay... It only hurts at first. First it hurts, but when the blood mixes, it should die down. Don't worry, I won't kill you. I poured my blood in properly so you won't collapse and crumble away like those failures last night. You will only look at me from now on. Yumizuka whimpers, wh whispers joyfully. What are you... you talking about, Yumizuka? K I'm saying that. I'm making both of us the same, Shiki-kun. Sucking people's blood instead of eating normal food. Nocturnal, unable to walk around under the sun. You're going to be a different creature. What is that? Ridiculous, that's just like... Yeah, like a vampire. I didn't really understand how I became this way either. Two nights ago, I went out to check the rumor that you were walking around in the shopping district every night. And then, when I came to, I was lying down in the back alley. Back then, I thought it was just cold, dark, and painful. But it's strange. After a while, after my body has changed completely, I understood a lot of things. My body hurts because it's being destroyed very fast and the sunlight acts like a catalyst for that. And if I want to stop the destruction, I need the genetic information of the same type of living organism as myself. Yeah, I didn't understand the logic that well, but it was plain enough what I had to do. I was cold and it was lonely by myself. I didn't want to disappear, so I just grabbed a random person and sucked his blood. And you know what? It was really delicious. The pain went away and I thought I could do anything. But it was so nice that before I realized it, it was all gone. The man was all shriveled up like a mummy and I felt really bad. 
I thought to myself that I was turning into a monster both in my mind and body. But I had to do it in order to live. Like I said, I didn't kill them because I hated them. I suck blood the same way you people eat animals. So I decided not to think about it too deeply. What? What is this? Is it okay to kill other people in order to live? That, I... But it seems I've become a proper vampire. Tonight's meal was quite fun. Until now, I've been sucking blood since I was cold and in pain, but now I'm getting the hang of sucking blood. It's becoming more interesting. You understand, don't you, Shiki-kun? You're a much better killer than I am. What? What, what are you what are you talking about, Yumizuka? Didn't I say before? I was always watching you, so I know your gentle side and your scary side. I never talked to you because I didn't understand your scary side. But I understand now. You're the same as me. Hey, Shiki-kun. Even you were thinking you wanted to kill someone without love or hate having anything to do with it. Don't be ridiculous. I've never even once thought that. I'm not being ridiculous. I never understood the fragile air about you, but now my body has changed and I understand. Shiki-kun, just you being there is flirting with death. That's the kind of person you are. Like me, someone who has to kill people. You need to kill others is the same as the need to breathe, right? You know, I was really happy yesterday. It was the first time I was happy after becoming this way. Because I finally understood you, Shiki-kun. I never really knew you before. Shiki-kun, you're the same, right? You see someone and for no reason your heart throbs, and your throat gets dry. Seeing red blood, you enter a stupor like you were drunk from alcohol, right? Stealing the other the life of others, extinguishing the life of others. Isn't it so exciting? So fun. That's a lie, that feeling. I've never. Ah, oh, that was something only in a dream, though. But I can't say I never had it. See? A pure homicidal impulse without the influence of emotion. Your fragile side, which I always wanted to understand. I forgot to say one more thing. A vampire is someone whose blood has been sucked by a vampire, right? That's true, you know. To be precise, the person whose blood has just been sucked dies. Vampires pour their own blood into their victims as they drink to turn their, them into their own. So what's in you right now is my blood. Standing up, Yumizuka speaks with satisfaction. I see. This is... Yumizuka-san's blood, then. The black thing that still defiles my body. It's not even a handful, but it still causes unbelievable pain. Enough to drive me to madness. If that's the case... This blood... This foreign pollutant swimming in my body... I can't see it. But with my eyes, that would... First... Because of my crawling on the ground, my glasses have fallen off. The lines. I can see the point of that. Foreign substance. Then kill. I stab the point with my knife. I thrust the knife into my body. But it doesn't cut any of my flesh. What it killed is not me, but this foreign object. Now it's been long enough. Stand up, Shiki-kun. I hear Yumizuka's command. The pain fades. I can control my arms and legs again, and I can finally stand up. Good. From now on, we'll always be together, Shiki-kun. Now, come here. Come by my side, hold my hand, and make me feel better. She holds out her hand. Thump. My heart pounds and my legs begin to move. But they don't move forward. They move backwards. Shiki-kun? Kill. Yumizuka's bewildered voice. Thump. My heart begins to scream. My throat becomes dry. Every nerve in my body recognizes the person in front of me as an enemy. Kill. This feeling. It's as if my thoughts belong to a completely different person. I can't resist the impulse flowing out within me. My mind is growing hazy. Why? Hey, why aren't you why aren't you doing what I tell you to? Kill. Thump, thump. My heart beats loudly, as if repeatedly ordering me to kill. To kill? Shiki-kun, you- No, Yumizuka. She looks at me as I breathe painfully. Why? Why didn't my blood work? I killed your blood, so I will not become your partner. What? The eyes staring at me are filled with surprise. Kill. Please disappear, Yumizuka. I don't understand why, but if you remain here, I- Kill. 
I... Kill. I don't want to kill anyone. My mind is inverting. Yumizuka's eyes turn black. Oh, fuck. This is serious mode. Like a needle, the sharp intent to kill. Tonoshiki's body separates itself from the mind and will of Tonoshiki. I lick my lips as I pick up my knife. Oh, you're serious now, Shiki-kun. Thought of I can't speak. Nothing. The thought of responding doesn't even occur. My field of vision shrinks to nothing. Liar. You said you'd help me. I don't know anything about that. Fine. If you won't cooperate, I'll kill you first. There'll be plenty of time to give you my blood after that. Well said for a miserable failure. I can only hear the voice. There are no thoughts. My body kills the body of Yumizuka in return, who is trying to kill my body. Wait, we... Oh. A sensation of spurting. My right arm holding my knife is heavy, and my left arm is burning. The bl burning on my left arm is from the flowing of blood. Yumizuka's nails tore through my clothes and made the blood flow. Maybe thanks to the bleeding, my burning blood cools down. My ferociously pounding heart starts to calm. But I start to realize. I pierced Yumizuka's heart with my knife, and am now holding her as if I am embracing her. What? This is a continuation of my nightmare. Without knowing it, I killed Yumizuka Satsuki. Why? Yumizuka's body up against mine is frigid. There was never, never any warmth to begin with. Her body is like pure ice, and it isn't doing anything but embracing mine. Yumi, Zuka. My fingers holding the knife shake uncontrollably. Shallow breathing fills the air. Mine and hers. What have I done? I didn't want to kill her. I didn't even have a single thought of hurting her, so why? Shiki, Kun. I hear Yumizuka's voice right next to my ear. She's probably going to voice her grudge. She asked me to help her, but all I did in re response was to kill her without even thinking. I am so happy. But Yumizuka, with gentleness, like she were having a dream, said those words. Why? Because this was the first time you ever seriously looked at me. That's why I'm so happy. That makes me your first time, Shiki-kun. Thumb. I'm so sorry. They say only death can cure a fool, but in my case, it seems even death couldn't cure me. Thump. You meet Zuka? Thump. There's no reply. With a dry sound, her body crumbles to ashes, as if it was never there to begin with. What happened? That's right. I could not understand. That's fine. Uh, uh. I breathe harder. Knife still in hand, the contents of my stomach rise to my throat. Uh, uh. How come? There is regret over killing her. There's also guilt. But above all, I can't rid myself of this feeling. Ah, uh, ah, uh, what a shock. If you call this pain pleasure, then this has to be the greatest pleasure in the world. That's what I was thinking as I feel this blood pulsing through my body. That's the kind of person you are. Like me, someone who has to kill people to live. She, you need to kill others is the same as you need to breathe. She said killing others was fun. She proudly said that to me. No, no, that's wrong. I cannot accept that. If I accept that, I, would, I could never live as myself again. I'm different. I'm different from you, Yumizuka. There's no power in my denial. My whole vision it wavers. Here, if I stay here any longer, I'll go crazy. I have to go back. Back to my world. I need to hurry back to the normal life of Tonoshiki, or else I'll be engulfed in the, by this poison. Gah. Trying to stifle the sharp pain in my head, I start to walk away. The door opens with a creak. With a heavy body and dulled mind, I make it back to the mansion. My footsteps drag behind me. The moonlight illuminates my figure, making it look like an exhausted ghost. My left arm hurts where Yumizuka wounded me. The bleeding has stopped, and the gradual lessening of the pain tells me it couldn't have been too deep. I reach the stairs. I don't even care about treating my wounds. Right now, I just want to stumble back to my room and sleep like a rock.
Having just ended the life of a friend, this bloody night comes to an end. With the death of Yumizuka, we have reached the end of this part. What plagues Shiki's mind will remain a mystery for now. I will see you next time for Chapter 4, Cradle Garden.